the deepest and darkest corners of Varda were the home to some very strange creatures. Creatures that were nameless, for they were ancient horrors, whose unsettling presence was only matched by the mysteries that surrounded them. What sort of creature were they? Where did they come from? And were they aligned with evil? Hey guys, it's Carl here. And in today's episode, we'll be unraveling the mysteries of the nameless creatures of Moria. So there was a great abyss below the bridge of khazad that was so deep that it had never been measured. It led all the way down to the very foundation of stone and to an icy cold pool of water, and horrible creatures could be found lurking in its darkness as they gnawed at the roots of the mountain and carved out twisted passages. These were the nameless things, and it seems that they were some sort of ancient creature, for they were older than Sauron, and he was one of the first beings to enter the world of Arda. Sauron didn't even know that these creatures existed, and after Gandalf and the Balrog fell into this abyss, they came across these creatures, and they used the tunnels that they created. Now these creatures are enshrouded in mystery, and to find the answers that we seek, we must explore other parts of the mythology. The first and most important question is, where did these creatures come from, and who created them? And how could they be older than Sauron, who was a Maiar spirit? Now according to the mythology of Varda, the only being that could create life was Aru Luvatar, the one true god. Yet I feel that these creatures weren't his direct creations, for their nature seems too twisted. A popular theory is that they were once normal creatures that were captured by Morgoth, and that he experimented on them in his fortress of Angband, twisting their very nature to corruption and turning them into horrible and evil creatures. Though from my end, I'm not really satisfied with this answer, for if they were experiments of Morgoth, then I would expect that Sauron, who was Morgoth's second in command, would know of their existence. And by the time these creatures were corrupted, Sauron had already entered the world of Arda, and so it wouldn't make sense that they were said to be older than him. Now it might seem like we're at a dead end when it comes to their origins, though there is a passage from the book Morgoth's Ring that is often overlooked, and I feel that the answer to this question lies inside it. Just to give you some context, so that you can understand this quote better, the universe of Ea was created through a great music called the music of the Ainur, and in it, Iluvatar taught the Ainur spirits different parts of this theme. Morgoth was one of these Ainur spirits, though back then he was still known as Melkor, and he wanted to create his own music instead of following Iluvatar's themes, and this created this harmony within the music of the Ainur. Now this quote tells us, out of the discords of this music, that is to say, not directly out of either of the teams, Eru's or Melkor's, but of their dissonance with regard one to another, evil things appeared in Arda, which did not descend from any direct plan or vision of Melkor. They were not his children, and therefore, since all evil hates, they hated him too. The progenitor of things was corrupted. So it seems that the discord within this music created some evil creatures in Arda, and I believe that the nameless things were among them. This would explain how they were older than Sauron, for time only began to exist after the universe was created. When Sauron took part in the music of the Ainur, they were actually in a place called the Timeless Halls, which, as its name suggests, was beyond the dimension of time. And so, when Sauron finally entered the world of Arda, the nameless creatures already existed, and they would technically be older than him. I'm sorry if that was a bit confusing. Trust me, I know that the music of the Ainur can be quite complicated. So if you'd like me to clarify anything, just let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to point out that I find it really interesting that according to this quote, if the nameless things were born from the discord of Morgoth, then they wouldn't be his children or corruptions, and that they would hate him, even though they were evil. I guess this would kind of imply that they wouldn't serve him, and that they were an independent evil force in Arda. There is one other possible origin for these creatures that is worth mentioning, even though there isn't much evidence to back it up. However, it's still technically possible, and so I think it's worth including. So considering their strange nature, we can't exclude that they might have originated from the void that surrounded Arda. It's implied that Ungoliant, who was the mother of Shelob, might have been an incarnation of this emptiness, and so I guess there's a chance that the nameless things shared a similar origin. 
However, I still think that it's much more likely that they were a product of the discord of Morgoth, though I wanted to include this theory for completion's sake. Anyway, now that we've discussed their origins, the next questions that we need to answer are What sort of creatures were the nameless things? What did they look like? And what did they do? I'm sure that they must have been hideous creatures, and that there was something very wrong about them. For after Gandalf traveled through their lair, he refused to speak about these beings, for simply talking about this experience would darken the light of day. Whatever they were, it almost seems like they were more terrifying to speak of than the Balrog, perhaps not in terms of power, but in terms of presence. And I imagine that they were incredibly monstrous abominations, some form of eldritch horror, and perhaps we might have actually caught a glimpse of one of them in the books. I have a theory that the Watcher in the Water was actually one of these nameless creatures, and I believe that there's a lot to back this up. So the pool of water that was found outside of the west gate of Moria hadn't always been there, and it used to be a great valley with a stream passing through it. However, it seems that by the time of Balin's expedition into Moria, something had blocked this stream, and the water began to slowly fill up this valley and it formed a lake. Now I believe that as this pool of water became heavier and heavier, small cracks might have appeared in the rocks below from its tremendous weight, and with time they might have given way and formed tunnels to ancient passages beneath the mines of Moria. And so perhaps the Watcher was one of these nameless creatures that made its way to the surface through one of these tunnels. After all, Gandalf says that the Watcher had crept out of dark waters from beneath the mountains, and that it was older and fouler than the orcs. And this sounds almost exactly the same as the habitat and qualities of the nameless things. I'd also like to mention that I don't think the movies did a great job at portraying the Watcher. They made it seem too krakenish and normal. We actually never see its face in the books, and all we know is that it had at least 20 long tentacles, which were pale green and glowed with their own light, and that its presence gave the lake an unwholesome and eerie feeling. In fact, it seems that the Fellowship could somehow sense its presence, and the moment Frodo stepped into the water, he knew that there was something very wrong with this lake. The Watcher also had a horrible stench, and it's implied that it was able to sense the One Ring, which is why it targeted Frodo first. Now these nameless creatures were set to gnaw at the foundations of the Earth, as they created dark tunnels in the heart of these mountains, and I imagine that they could also be found in other parts of the world. There's an interesting passage from The Hobbit, which says, There are strange things living in the pools and lakes in the hearts of mountains. Fish whose fathers swam in, goodness only knows how many years ago, and never swam out again. While their eyes grew bigger, and bigger, and bigger, from trying to see in the blackness. Also, there are other things more slimy than fish. Even in the tunnels and caves the goblins have made for themselves, there are other things living unbeknown to them, that have sneaked in from outside to lie up in the dark. Some of these caves, too, go back in their beginnings to ages before the goblins, who only widened them and joined them up with passages. And the original owners are still there in odd corners, slinking and nosing about. What I find fascinating are these creatures that were said to be slimier than fish, that had carved out these caves beneath the mountains before the goblins had ever settled there, and how these original creatures were still hiding in dark forgotten corners of these caves, and how they lived in pools of water at the heart of these mountains. They almost sound exactly like the nameless things, and so perhaps they were all the same creatures that lived in the depths of the world. Anyway friends, this wraps up today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Where do you think the nameless things came from, and do you agree with my speculation? And do you believe that the Watcher was one of these creatures, and were you happy with its portrayal in the movies? As always, I'd like to thank my patrons, who have really helped to elevate this channel, it wouldn't be the same without you. And I would like to express how grateful I am for your support, especially our wizard tier patrons, T. Gorman, Mike Feeney, Roland Mervold, and Jacob Williams. If you too would like to help support this channel while unlocking some cool perks, I'll be leaving a link to my Patreon page in the video description below. I'll also be leaving links to our Instagram, Facebook, Discord, and Twitter communities. So follow us if you'd like to have some extra Lord of the Rings content in your day-to-day -day lives. As always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. 
and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.